What's up, y'all? So this is part six. Who the F did I marry? And what up, TikTok Teasy? This is part six and seven. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is part six of who the f did I marry? So where we left off. So obviously, <clears throat> um, my doctor. Child, her memory better than all ours. I ain't gonna lie. Called and told me there was no heartbeat. The pregnancy was not viable at that point, and I was cramping and spotting at work. Went into my best friend's office and immediately started crying. She was like, what's going on? And I said, um, I told her what the doctor said. And she grabbed her keys, grabbed her purse, and was like, let's go. I'm taking you home. On my way home, I called my boyfriend <coughs> and told him what the doctor said. And he, was I would like, not call him my boyfriend. Like, I'll meet you at home. So he was coming from Duluth, went straight home. Um, <coughs> so... Allegedly, because you don't know where he was coming from, friend. 24, 48 hours later, I had a doctor's appointment. And my doctor gave me three options. First option, let everything happen naturally. Your body will expel the fetus on its own. Mm. Second option, you can take a pill, which will induce expelling the fetus at home. The pill basically will cause you to contract and expel. The third option was to go into the hospital and do a DNC. I did not want to do a DNC because I did not want to be in a hospital with COVID going on. <clears throat> and for whatever reason, I did not do the option of let it happen naturally. So I chose to do the pill. His birthday was um, June 17th. My ex's boyfriend, excuse me, my ex's birthday was June 17th. So... The decision was made we're going to celebrate his birthday that day go out to eat um, and then that night i would take the pill because we both were off from work the next two days next two or three days so how you know he worked you get what i'm saying um went out to eat to try to celebrate as best we could and then took the pill that night that night was the most traumatic, excruciating pain I've ever put my body through. Um, I do not recommend any woman, if prayerfully you don't have to go through that, but I don't recommend taking that pill. If you mm. don't have to, don't do it. Mm, 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 um, I, st I spent the whole night in the bathroom mm. just crying in so much pain. I couldn't take, they gave me a narcotic. I couldn't take it because it was, I found out I was allergic to it. So it was causing me to like projectile vomiting. Oh, it, no. It was a mess. So, um, it's all bad. And he was right there. You know, he was scared that he needed to take me to the ER. <clears throat> but in the morning, the pain kind of subsided. So about 72 hours later, I had another doctor's appointment where the purpose of this appointment was to do an ultrasound to see if everything had passed. Everything did not pass. So because of that, my doctor was like, not take another bill. Oh, no. Um, my DNC was scheduled for the first week of July. My boyfriend, my ex, was going to take me. Um, that was always the plan. Two days before. I would have came up with a name for him by then. Liar. Line ass, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> My procedure, he tells me, he comes home and tells me that he is up for a promotion. He's up to, he's up to be promoted to VP. <clears throat> because of this, for what the job? president of the company, <clears throat> excuse me, is coming in. And it was going to be this huge business meeting he had to go to. Um, the business meeting was scheduled for the day of my surgery. Oh, just so happened. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm throwing a fit because I was like, you, you know, you, you, there's no way you can do that meeting. Like I need you to take me to the hospital and all this other stuff. And so he offered to have his sister take me to the hospital. Uh -uh, I don't know who she is either. Um, apparently his sister lived in Douglasville. I was like, no, because I've never met her. Like, I'm not, I know, I'm not having a stranger take me to the uh, hospital. Basically, no. right. This is a private situation. I don't want to do that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So my aunt was going, to, had offered to take me. And then my friend who took me home from work had offered to take me. 
So at that point, um, we get into an argument because he's like, my sister is, you know, you, you about your family. So why can't she step in? And I was like, nah, because I don't know her. Period. Right. Hello. Done. So like I said, so my friend offers to take me to the hospital because I was all distressed that he's saying he has a business meeting and he he's can't cap take me. <clears throat> so I remember being on I-75 on the connector on the phone with her crying because I, I was so embarrassed that he wasn't going to be the one to take me and that I was needing to rely on someone else to take me to the hospital in order to get a DNC done. And she was really great. She was like, girl, this is why you have a village. Like, Hello. it's okay. Things happen. The world is crazy right now. But I completely understand where she was coming from. I will take you. You're going to be okay. So he did not take me to the hospital um, for my DNC. My friend did. She could not stay because of COVID protocol. Um, so when they wheeled me into pre-op after I got checked in, I texted him and was just letting him know, hey, here's the update. I'm about to, you know, I'm in pre-op. They're going to get me prepared to go back um, to the surgical ward or whatever. And the response I got was from his new executive assistant named David. Now, Allegedly. He, told me he was up for the promotion. <clears throat> he did tell me that part of getting this new job would be that he would get an executive, uh, executive assistant lip, named uh -huh. David. Uh -huh. And he did tell me, I'm going to make sure that I inform David, if you get a text from this number, meaning from me, um, pull me out of the meeting. Because, you know, she's, my fiance's having um, a procedure done and I'm picking her up. So it's important that you come get me if it's something serious. So I text him, David responds. He said, yeah, Mr. Blah Blah told me that um, Mr. Blah Blah you is crazy. are having a procedure done. If you need me to get him, I can go get him. He's in a meeting. Just let me know what you need. And I just said, no, don't bother him. I'm just giving an update that they're about to take me back. And David responds and says, I'm so sorry you're going through this. Please let me know if there's anything I can do. So I have the procedure. I wake up and I am now in recovery. <clears throat> I should be in recovery 45 minutes up to an hour and a half. I wake up, first thing I ask, and I remember asking is where is such so -and, and such? The mm. nurse who was so sweet, you know, she was like, everything went well. Um, you're doing great. She said, we spoke to your fiance. He's on his way. So... I said, okay, you know, okay, I kind of dozed back out, but I could still hear everything that was going on. I just could not keep my eyes open to save my life. Right. So I hear her talk to the other nurse, and that's when she said, yeah, um, Dr. So-and-so called her fiancé, and his executive assistant picked up. And the executive assistant said that he was in a business meeting and that, um, you know, you could relate to he him. He was executively lying with his lying ass. Girl, I'm sick of it. What you need to say, and he'll, you know, tell Mr. He'll tell the fiance. And my doctor was like, hell no. <laughs> HIPAA. Um, I need to speak to him. So apparently my fiance called the doctor back about 30 minutes later. And the doctor informed him she'll be ready to be discharged in about an hour. You know, you can make your way and come pick her up. He said he was on his way. Yeah. He was on his way from Duluth to Atlanta, which is not a huge distance, but the time of day, one day <clears> out of <throat> there's always traffic. So he should have been there within the hour. I should have only been in recovery an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next part. Okay, so this is part six of Who the Fuck Did I Marry? So, part seven, who the fuck did I marry? So, he should have, I should have been in recovery at Northside Hospital for about, an, at most, an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. um, 
subsequently I ended up being in recovery between three to three and a half hours. The Dang. nurses kept calling my ex asking what's the status because they were actually getting ready to do a shift change. So they kept calling asking what's the status? What's the status? Like, where are you? I right. want to say that they called a total of three times and they spoke to him twice. Um, so at this point, I knew that they were all like, where is her, where is her fiance? Like, what right. is going on? Um, yeah, he had doing he to do. in traffic. Cap. And so he was making his way there. He eventually did get to Northside Hospital. Um, and they wheeled me down. Because, um, again, he couldn't come in um, just because of the protocols. So when I got in the car... Um, and I'm in pain, but yet drugged up, couldn't keep my eyes open, couldn't really, I was just out of it. But I remember him calling my aunt and my mother and letting them know, I picked her up, we're on the way home, let me get her settled, and then um, I'll give you guys an update. I remember that. Right. What I did not know was that he had text my aunt and my mom and asked them to not bother me for like a week like just please don't reach out to her let her just rest i am from new jersey i am from an african-american family you don't tell my black mama or my black aunt that um you know please don't bother her for a week <laughs> don't bother her for a week is cr My mama? Continue. <laughs> Girl, because I'm sick of it. I didn't know this at the time, but I'm just interjecting that part. I'm trying to stay in the timeline, but um, he, he did apparently do that. And my aunt was like, well, I will fuck you up. Oh, okay, because anyway. what? So, go home. Oh, are we really talking about him? Um, he waits on me hand and foot. I recover. Um, just needed about 24 to 48 hours to just get my mind right. Um, during this time, in between the when the house in Douglasville fell, um, fell through, we had not talked about a house. So I guess it was about a week later after. Oh, he lied about it anyway. And you already knew about that. The DNC. He decides that. You know, do you want to start looking for a house again? Excuse me, I have hiccups, y'all. Do you want to start looking for a house again? Because of what happened with the house in Douglasville, I felt like I was smarter this time to say, Hell no. You know, I want to be involved in every aspect. You decided to still get a house? Because I don't know what the fuck happened with that house in Douglasville. You don't but know? what I do know Girl. is that he he lied to me. I didn't think, I, I didn't know then what I know now. I just knew he lied about putting in, <clears throat> excuse me, I knew he lied about being under contract. So um, I told him, I said, I don't want to work with your friend who I've never met, never talked to. I know that he has talked to him because he's talked to him in front of me. And I'm going to demonstrate on one of the videos how he used to do his phone calls. Don't worry, it's coming. So we found a new real estate agent. Really nice guy. Um, his name was Scott. I am using his real name. Really nice guy. Um, and we told him what the budget was. And Scott was like, okay. When you guys are ready, we can start looking at houses. Try to look for houses that are empty because you can actually tour those. If it's a house where someone's already living in there, chances are it's going to have to be a virtual tour because of COVID. So I found a house um, that I absolutely, in total, we must have looked at about 15 houses. Um, but I found a house in Smyrna that I absolutely loved. We toured the house. Everything about this house was perfect. 5,000 foot the up mortgage is crazy. 699,000. Mm. It was a brand new construction build. 
The only issue was that the basement was not finished. They don't like never the finish the basement. Man cave. Um, again, I went with him to tour this house. So this was already feeling very different than the situation in Douglasville. Because we did not actually tour the Douglasville house. We only did a FaceTime um, virtual tour. This house in Smyrna, we toured. Okay. We toured this house more than once. Um, and it was it was gorgeous. Fucking gorgeous. So we talked about it. Okay. He said that he had the money. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause he got his earnings back, right? Again, the price was six million. ass. He said he felt comfortable uh-huh. putting in an all cash offer. Now, if you remember on the videos before, he told me he had money in his savings from when he played football. So when he said an all cash offer, even I knew you you got that kind of money like where you can cut a cashier's check for 699,000 and he told me he did. Oh. He had money in savings um from when he played football and he was very comfortable paying all cash for this home. So, just lying. The real estate agent Scott sent over the paperwork. The paperwork was sent in both of our names. It was sent to my email. Um, that was another thing that I changed after Douglasville. Everything gets sent to me. And then I will be sure that he signs it. So he sent it to me. Well, at least. I looked over okay. the offer. Um, we were asking, excuse me, we were going to put in an all cash full price offer with um, a request to have the basement finished. Also, we were requesting for the seller to give us an answer within 24 hours. Mm. Um, we were requesting a quick closing. Um, these are just some of the things I remember. I remember 24 hours, like I didn't want to wait on y'all think about it. 24 hours, let us know if you're accepting the offer or not. And then also a quick closing because it was a, a new construction. So we didn't have to wait for the current tenant to move out. We didn't have to do that. So I watched in our bedroom as he pulled it up because it was a electronic document. He signed his name to the offer for $699,000 cash. He re- requested again, the seller let us know in 24 hours if they were accepting the offer. So we submitted the offer at around 6 p.m. We were requesting that by 6 p.m. the next day, they let us know if the offer was accepted or not. I watched him sign the offer. I sent the offer back to Scott from my I wouldn't even cared about that, y'all. Because you done already lied. That's too much for me. Email. I can't take it. All parties had signed. Scott texted us and said, I got it. I'm submitting it. I will let you know what they say. Let's go in to part seven. Sorry. Oh. Okay. So I just want to clear up some things that I realized um, is kind of creating some confusion. So just allow this video to serve as a stop sign. Let's clarify. Mm. First of all, the story, background. He was born in Philly, raised in Philly and moved to Augusta. Um, Story is that he moved to Augusta for high school. After high school, he went to college at San Diego State. Enjoyed San Diego State, stayed in San Diego for quite a while. Um, Got married out in California, had a house in California, played arena football out in California. But his family was back here in Augusta, Georgia. Um, He still had a lot of family up in Philly, but for the most part, he had a sister in Augusta. He had a sister in Douglasville. He had a brother in Baltimore. He had another brother in Philly, and he had um, a brother in Nashville. So I just want to clarify that in terms of... um, the Not the demographics, but the geography. I don't even know if I could believe her at this point. (laughs) I'm just so aggravated. Born in Philly, came to Augusta for high school, went to San Diego State for college, 
played football, stayed in San Diego, st excuse me, stayed in San Diego, got married out there, but still had quite a bit of family here in Augusta, excuse me, here in Georgia. Um, he also had a sister, I think I said, who lived in Douglasville. I have physically met his aunt who lived in Augusta. I've met his brother who lives in Augusta. Um, I have spoken on FaceTime with a brother who lives in Baltimore. Um, and then I will demonstrate how he used to talk to the brother that lives in Philly. That's coming up. <coughs> that. In terms of the proposal, you did not miss the story of the proposal. I simply did want to share it because it was embarrassing. Basically, he gave me three ring options. We went to a jeweler at the Mall of Georgia. He had me pick out three rings. I told him which one I liked the most because I knew it wasn't a, a romantic proposal at all. I knew which ring I liked the most. I told him which one. He, he basically said, when I'm ready, I'll give you the ring and I'll propose. That's a sorry man right there. Continue. Ah! Fast forward. This should just get um, worse and worse. About, I guess it was summer because I was actually pregnant when the ring came. We were sitting at the dinner table. He took the ring box out of his pocket, slammed it on the dinner table. And I was like, what is this? He was like, open it. I opened it. Open it is Inside crazy. That was the ring that I had wanted, um, that I had chosen at the jeweler. And he was like, all right, so this means that you're going to be my wife. Right, you know what to do, head ass. And here she go, yes, big daddy, yes. Oh. I was pregnant. So, again, when I asked y'all to give me grace, it's because there are certain things that's just like, girl, what was you thinking? Man. Trust me. You ain't got to explain to me. There's no excuse. Because I'm sick of it. Um, so there was never a, will you marry me? Oh. It was more of a, we're living together. We're having a baby together. Um, we you, need to get married because you know what to do, Sheldon. The backstory. <coughs> That's what was that, that was. His dad was a retired police officer, but at one point his father was a pastor. So he could quote the Bible like nobody's business, as we all know. So can Lucifer. Okay, them be the ones. But anyway, he could quote the Bible like no one's business. Um, them be the ones, so, girl. What else? Calm down. Take your time. That's how we ended up engaged. Uh, I was wearing a ring. I was wearing, I will find a picture and I will try to post it. But I was wearing the ring. Um, don't worry. There's more to that story as well. So can't just wanted wait. to clarify some things um, for the people who were like, wasn't it weird that he had a sister who um, lived close, but he's from Philly. So I just wanted to definitely bring. Girl, we already know. That he ain't from none of them places. We already know he ain't play no damn football. We already know all of what you did not know, friend. That nigga stay right up the damn street. <laughs> Clarity to what he told me um, was the backstory. Born in Philly, came to Augusta for high school. Went to California for foot, um, college, played football at San Diego State, played football and arena football, um, worked at Apple, and then joined the condiment company in California. Whole time, he stayed right up the street from you in Riverdale. Who then Guarantee. transferred him back to Georgia. Guarantee. He was married in California, um, and he told me he got divorced in California. That is important as well. That will come up again later. Um, and so the ex-wife at this point in time, at the time that I'm telling you part seven, which is the last video I just posted, the ex-wife <coughs> lived in California with her two kids, his two uh, stepkids. The two stepkids were 17 and 20 or 21, but they were that age group, that age group. And he was saying that he was very close with them. So he wanted to keep a tight relationship stop the cap um 
and he talked to them, if not every day, every other day. When I say, and I, I when I say this, I need y'all to understand. When I say that he talked to someone, it means that he he was on the phone in front of me, talking to the person. I hope that that, because I will touch back on this. He was on Can't the wait. phone in front of me talking to the person. So he talked to his siblings every day. He talked to his aunt almost every day. He wasn't talking to nobody on that phone. He talked to his family the way I talked to my family almost every day. Um, and again, I will demonstrate how he used to do the phone calls. I will also demonstrate how he used to do the work phone calls because he called me every single day from work. And he would talk to people while he was on the phone with me. Mm -hmm. And I could hear people in the background. But that's a whole nother girl. It was white noise. Part. So again, buckle your seats. I promise I'm reading your comments. I'm reading your questions, but I wanted to bring this video just to clarify some stuff. Hopefully this helps. And um, honestly, I hope <clears throat> I know people are fascinated by this, but more than anything, I hope that there's a woman watching this and she's saying to herself, okay, it's time for me to ask some questions. That's my hope. She doing this for the other lady. Okay, so this I is just for my number one. All right, part All right. eight of who the fuck did I marry? So we submitted an offer on the house in Smyrna. I I'm sent it over to Scott, our realtor. And next day comes, Scott asks if we can take a phone call. So he calls us and tells us that the offer was not accepted and the builder did not do a counter offer. We don't exactly know um, why. Um, we don't exactly know. Because he didn't have that 699000 friend. That's why. Why he didn't accept it. But the bottom line is, is that we figured out later on that he didn't want to finish the basement. So the offer was not accepted. The house fell through. I was okay with that because again, I knew he had put in an offer. So we continued looking at other houses. We found another house um, in Smyrna that he really liked. Um, I thought that it was way too big for just the two of us. 722000 um, And so the price of this home was much higher Sheesh. than the 750000 that Chase had approved for the mortgage. So what he explained to me was that he was willing to do the $750,000 mortgage. And he was also willing to put a significant amount of the money and savings on the house which meant that he was now comfortable going from 750000 up to about 900000 Again, his, his whole explanation was, I have the money where I can put down a substantial down payment, <clears throat> bring down the price of the home, and then basically mortgage the rest of it. So that was now the plan. I was not comfortable with a home <laughs> over $900,000. Um, but again, keep in mind, I saw the Chase paperwork. So I was like, I just feel more comfortable sticking at the 750000 mark. That's what you were approved for. Let's go with that. <coughs> at this point, this is now fall of 2020. Um, we have been talking about marriage. I had my ring. Um, he had made VP at the company. And again, he was calling me every day from work um the i need to kind of explain how the company was ran because when you think vp you would think he would be in an office it was a condiment company so they actually were producing the condiments and i'm not saying the name of the company on purpose but they were producing the condiments um in this particular plant location it's given because it ain't a company so a lot of times <laughs> he would simply tell me that he walked the floor um, checking in with girl, he was never there. His this nigga was going to Starbucks during the day. 
subordinates, basically. I'm over it. Now, how did he go to work? For the most part, at this point, he left before I woke up. However, pretty much he wore dress pants, um, kind of like a deep, a dark navy blue cargo pant. And he had a polo shirt with the company logo on it. What I saw a lot of times is that he would not wear the polo shirt to work. He would wear like a company t-shirt. He would wear rubber sole shoes and the um, navy blue cargo pants. I didn't think it was a uniform, but it definitely, it reminded me of what someone would wear when I worked at Amazon, if you're going to be doing manual labor. He didn't go to work sloppy looking at all, but it definitely was not suit and tie. Nowhere near suit and tie. Um, it is fair to know that outside of work, he was a man who he loved to dress. He loved to wear the latest Jordans. He loved to collect watches. He collected a lot of Invicta watches. Um, he he loved to collect hats. He wore hats, baseball caps everywhere because he didn't like the shape of his head. Um, so in terms of how he dressed casually, the man, he could dress. Um, in terms of how he dressed for work, yeah, he didn't dress like a VP. But his excuse was... I'm constantly walking the production floor and I can't be in a suit and tie walking the production floor where they're creating the condiments that we're selling. So by this point, again, this is fall. Child, I'm about to go to sleep after this one. We're still looking at houses. Oh my damn, my um, we're still touring houses as much as we can because it is COVID. Um, we had found another house that we really liked and a house that I really truly wanted to put an offer in on. This was now gonna be the second house that we put an offer on. He put in the the asking price, I believe was about 700,000. He put in under asking um, an offer for about <clears throat> 650,000, I'm guessing, but I'll try to find the house and put it on this and put it on the story. Um, the reason that that house fell through we found out that he was sitting on a septic tank. We found out that the septic tank had an issue and it would have taken about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars to fix the septic tank. The sellers were not willing to fix the septic tank. Personally, I didn't really care for the house that much. I'm the one who was like, I don't really want it. So even though we put an offer in, we had twenty four hours where we could uh pull our offer back. And so we did and we found out, I believe it was in the disclosure. And if you're a realtor, please feel free to tell me if I'm using the wrong terminology, but I believe it was in the disclosure that they told us the septic tank needs to be replaced. That's when I was like, nah, I don't, I don't want that house. Um, so we pulled out the house fell through. And so I was fine with it because again, I was heavily involved. I saw him sign the offer. I knew every step of what was going on. Our real estate agent, Scott, was amazing. I wouldn't believe nothing that that man said. But you will see in when nothing, I get Nathaniel. To it, where he made a mistake as a real estate agent. So, house number two fell through. Um, we then moved on saw a few more houses and then we get to house number three i'm going to pause talking about the houses because now i need to introduce what happened with the cars stay tuned cars yeah i'm done for the night but i'm gonna tell you right now we're gonna be back tomorrow i'm gonna give y'all these videos <clears throat> we're gonna work it out okay let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. Look at her face. <laughs> Bye.